Hey guys, this is Kristen with AccountingInFocus.com and in this video we are looking at cash flow for long-term or fixed assets. So we're going to be looking at the equipment account, but this methodology really works for all types of fixed assets. So these are things like equipment, furniture and fixtures, vehicles, buildings, land, okay, so anything in that long-term assets category will be treated the same way. So the example that we're looking at is we've got equipment from the balance sheet for 2015 and 2014 and there's a note that says no equipment was sold. This is really important. The problems will either tell you that no equipment was sold or will tell you if equipment was sold and we're going to go through two different examples. We're going to go through one where no equipment was sold and we're going to go through a second one where there was equipment that was sold because the treatment's a little bit different. So the first thing that I do whenever I'm doing cash flow line by line is I'm going to calculate the difference between the 2014 balance and the 2015 balance. So we know that the balance increased because we can tell that 415 is higher than 395 and if we do the math the difference is $20,000. So our equipment balance increased by 20,000. So if you think about what causes equipment to increase, well, based on US GAAP, we're using the historical cost principle. So we can't adjust assets up for market value. So that means that if there's an increase, that means that we purchased equipment. So the next thing you should do is you should think about what section this would go in. So if we purchased equipment, what section does this go in in our cash flow statement? Well, purchasing equipment is an investment by the business, right? They're trying to invest in new equipment or new long-term assets in order to increase revenue. So this is an investment and it goes in the investing section. Now I want you to think about what effect does this have on your cash? Does it make your cash increase or decrease? So if we look at purchasing equipment, if you buy a piece of equipment, what happens to your cash? Cash goes down. So this will result in a decrease in cash. All right, so how do we put this in the cash flow statement? So we know it's going to go in the investing section. We know it's going to be a decrease in cash. Anytime you're working with either the investing section or the financing section, we have to explain why something increased or decreased. We can't just say increase in equipment and put the amount. So if the equipment account increased, we know that we purchased equipment. So under the investing section, we're going to say purchase of equipment and subtract $20,000 because our cash went down. All right, this is a really simple example. Okay, and when you're just purchasing equipment, it's a lot easier. But let's look at what this would look like if we sold some equipment. So in this example, my equipment balance went down. And there's a note that says the company sold equipment with an original cost of $20,000 and accumulated depreciation of $15,000 for $9,000. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit. So we have equipment that we paid $20,000 for. We've depreciated it 15,000 and we sold it for nine. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the difference in the account. Always do this first. So if we calculate the difference, okay, the purchase price of the asset was $20,000 and that's the difference between the two lines. So it went from 435 to 415, that's 20,000. Remember that when you sell an asset, you remove the asset from the books, that's the 20,000, and you also have to remove the accumulated depreciation of 15. So that means that this asset has a book value of five. 20,000 minus 15,000 is five. So the asset is worth five to us but we sold it for nine. So what does that mean? If it was worth five to us, we sold it for nine, that means there's a gain of 4,000. Okay, so now 
we have all these numbers, what do we put on the cash flow statement? Okay, so remember that we're putting things in the cash flow statement that have an effect on cash. So the two items that we have to put on the statement of cash flow is the $9,000 in cash that we received and then the other thing we have to put in is the gain. And now you might be thinking, well, the gain doesn't have an effect on cash, so why do we have to put that in if we're going to put in the nine? Remember that the purpose of the operating section is to take your net income and adjust it to cash from operations. Because the gain is factored in to our net income, it increases our net income, and no cash was exchanged for that amount, that means we have to adjust our net income for that gain. So let's talk about which sections these two lines are going to go in. So the $9,000 were selling equipment, and so the selling price is going to go into the investing section. Whenever we buy or sell long-term assets, that's investing. Now, the gain. The gain is going to go in the operating section. Okay, why? We just said a moment ago that that gain increased our net income by $4,000. But no cash was exchanged for that $4,000. If you kind of think about the journal entry that we would record when we sold this piece of equipment, we would credit the equipment account for $20,000, we would debit accumulated depreciation for 15, we would debit cash for nine, and then in order to make the journal entry balance, we would have credited gain on sale of equipment by $4,000. So that is factoring into our net income. It's increased our net income by $4,000. And when we're trying to create cash from operations, we need to pull this back out. This is considered a non-cash transaction. So if I'm looking at this, whatever I did with it on the income statement, if it's a non-cash transaction, I need to pull it back out and do the opposite on the cash flow statement. So if we added the gain to increase our net income, we need to subtract it back out. Okay, so let's look at increase and decrease in cash. So what effect will the $9,000 have on our cash? Well, if you sell a piece of equipment, what happens to your cash? Your cash goes up. So the $9,000 will create an increase. Now think about the gain. If we want to remove the gain from our net income, then we have to subtract it back out. So the gain will decrease our cash by $4,000. And this is when we're trying to remember the purpose of that operating section is to take our net income and bring it to cash from operations. So because this increased our net income, on the statement of cash flow, we're going to subtract it back out because it's a non-cash item. So remember, your non-cash items are gains and losses. They're also things like depreciation and amortization. Okay, so how is this going to appear on the statement of cash flow? So first, in the operating section, we're going to show gain on sale of equipment and we're going to subtract $4,000. In the investing section, we're going to show sale of equipment and add 9,000. So this affects two different portions of your cash flow statement. The sale of equipment for how much cash we received and we have to pull the gain back out of our net income. That's it. So just remember anytime you have a sale of equipment you're going to have two different sections affected. You're going to have the sale of the equipment in the investing section and then the gain or loss that you've got to pull back out. Now what if we would have had a loss? Well a loss decreases our net income and so in the operating section of the statement of cash flow we would have to add that back in to basically erase it. Okay. 
that's it. So if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, click like and comment on the video. I love your comments and I respond to every single comment I get. Share this video with your friends. If you know somebody else who's taking an accounting course, you know, let them know that like, hey, this resource is out there. And then check out my website, accountinginfocus.com, where I've got lots more tutorials, written content, links to more videos. And so, because I want to help you be successful, whether you're taking an accounting course, you're studying for the CPA, or you're studying for the CMA. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.